The US fights against IoT toothbrushes, there's a new unfixable Apple vulnerability, and another supply chain attack. Welcome back to ThreatWire. A few weeks ago, there were these rumors circling that certain smart toothbrushes were being used as a part of a botnet and were able to DDoS people. While this was debunked, it doesn't exclude the concern that many IoT devices are being shipped with poor security, and more devices are becoming unnecessarily connected and believed to be secure devices aren't being configured properly. In October 2022, the Biden administration published a press release on their initiatives and workings towards creating a more cyber secure America. Tucked away in this release was a paragraph about the initiative to create a label system for IoT-enabled devices to acknowledge that they meet a certain level of cybersecurity. This month, the US has released final ruling about this new label, and it's coming into effect. The label, called the US Cyber Trust Mark, is now available as a part of the FCC's regulatory purview. In the ruling and explanation, they separate products and devices. IoT devices is an internet-connected device that coupled with at least one network interface for interacting with the world online, while IoT products are IoT devices that have advanced features including data communication between external components, third-party components, and etc. At the moment, the ruling, the ruling initially only applies to IoT products. The examples given include security cameras, smart thermometers, and baby monitors. This new IoT ruling will not apply to motor devices, medical devices, and motor equipment as they are regulated by different agencies. Smartphones and general computer equipment are explicitly excluded from these IoT products covered by this program. Companies are requested to create a new endpoint to help collect information so that consumers can see required information in a uniform way. We agree with the Cybersecurity Coalition that the primary purpose of the label is to help consumers make informed purchasing decisions and include in the registry information that is key to making a purchasing decision without overwhelming the consumer. In my research of the story, I was personally unable to find how to apply for this marking, but if you do know or work at a company that this will be applying or will be applying to, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Everyone is talking about the Apple antitrust lawsuit, but we have a more pressing Apple story to cover. This week, academic researchers published a new paper of a cryptographic vulnerability on Apple M series chips. Yes, maybe even the newly released M3. At the moment, the vulnerability is confirmed to work on the M1, and based on its functionality, it's extrapolated to work on any M series chip. The vulnerability called GoFetch was disclosed to Apple in December of 2023 and Apple has yet to come up with a proper solution. The attack focuses on the data memory dependent prefetcher known as the DMP. The DMP speeds up processing by attempting to predict what might be needed from memory in the future and pulls it out from slower memory into faster memory space. If the data is correct, it is used. If the data is not that which is expected, the computer ignores it and requests the data it requires. Our key insight is that while the DMP only dereferences pointers, an attacker can craft program inputs so that when those inputs mix with cryptographic secrets, the resulting intermediate state can be engineered to look like a pointer if and only if the secret satisfies an attacker chosen predicate. Following this, by observing the DMP, they're able to programmatically infer bits about secret cryptographic keys. The attack can work on both traditional encryption models and post-quantum encryption models. The GoFetch attack can be executed via download of any application that doesn't require root access, so any third-party app could have this vulnerability tucked away. Fixing this vulnerability has the cost of computation speed. The M3 is reported to have a special feature which allows developers to disable the DMP functionality, but again, this is at the cost of the speed of the computer. So there is no fix right now. So encouraging smart and safe computing is the only major mitigation. According to Bleeping Computer, right now, Apple spokespeople are only able to share a developer page outlining a migration, which we've linked below. I've alluded to my interest in supply chain attacks in the past, but I found another story to share with you. There recently was a supply chain attack executed that was discovered over by the Chexmarks team, which they shared on their blog on March 25th, 2024. This supply chain attack comes down to clever typo squatting. Usually Python artifact files are mirrored onto files.pythonhosted.org, but attackers were using files.pypyhosted.org, that's P-Y-P-I. On the malicious mirrored site, popular Python package Colorama was uploaded with malicious code embedded into it. 
After the software from the malicious Colorama package was run, it was looking into cookies from browsers, info from Discord, crypto wallets, and more. In the beginning of the blog post, Chexmarts alleged that the supply chain attack hit over 170,000 people via top.gg projects. It was a weird way they put it, but they were talking about community size and kind of made it confusing. And I just want to clarify that this was actually only talking about the community size. In reality, the top.gg libraries had around two downloads per day. Allegedly, at the same time, the top.gg community was also faced with a DDoS attack on their systems under the belief that the, this was preventing the supply chain attack from being discovered. Chexmarks has also published their indicators of compromise on their blog, so please be sure to go check it out. As I said last week, I would read out a comment or two. Last week's stories, I talked a lot about the CVE system and what's happening. I think that Violent Orchid put it best. I love your name, by the way. The CVEs not being reported until they are fixed means that vulnerabilities will exist without information being provided to parties that need to deal with it until a fix is available. There were a lot of great comments last week and a few that had me in absolute stitches. I look forward to reading your comments for this week's episode. I know we talked about this in the past, but don't worry, I didn't forget. The book club is gonna start April 23rd, 2024. It's going to be in the EST time zone later in the day, so if you're not already a member of the Patreon and want to join the book club, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. As we approach our first meeting, I'll share some more info about it. We're going to start off with reading Hacking the Art of Exploitation by John Erickson, so please look forward to it. Baby, come here. So say hi. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of March 25th, 2024. I'm Allie Diamond, and if you want to find me online, I'm at Ending with Allie on everywhere, including Minecraft. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.